the music that we have that's been passed through generations is it's kind of the starting point, it's not the end point. A shepherd kept sheep on a hill, so I fell la 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 There came a pretty Time for me represents, I suppose, the people's curation as far as the music that I play is concerned. One of the things that I feel about the, the words of traditional song is that our ancestors, if you like, our predecessors are speaking to us, are telling us their stories. You can't find personal history, you can't find people's history in history books, in the, in the kind of books that you're given to read at school. You don't, you don't get people's stories, you don't get how someone's great, 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 great grandma felt, you know. It's not exactly a conversation with the past as such, but if you want to know how people felt, then listening to their music, listening to their music and their words from 200 years ago, from 300 years ago, is the most direct way to get it. Because when they've passed that down, the thing that gets kept Every generation loses some of the words or a bit of the tune or everyone gets rid of the chaff. They get rid of the stuff they don't really need, the stuff that's not relevant to them. But they keep the, they, they keep the essential thing that binds us all together. They keep the humanity, they keep the message, they keep that. And that remains, that, that thread remains. So if you wanna know directly how a person, an ordinary person on the street felt about something 150 years ago. You can get that from traditional music. That is the voice of the past speaking to you. And that message has been maintained for a reason, because it was important. Then he took her and laid her on the ground. -la 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 My family on, on both sides uh, is very, very musical. My father, comes from seven generations of musicians, as far as we can tell. Um, and my, my mother's family were all very, very musical. Now they are vanished and now they appear. The idea of music in my family is not uh, uh, an old days and the nowadays kind of thing. It's cyclical. So I never felt the, I never felt the need to to do anything different from what they were doing because even though I do do things in a different way from them, that doesn't mean I'm rebelling. I mean, far from it. I, my, I have a, my band has, a, has a, an electric guitar in it. My father was one of the first people to pick up an electric guitar to play traditional music with. So, you know, it's, I'm not, <laughs> I'm far from rebelling, actually. The whole wayward daughter idea, which is the name of the, the biography that you don't need to read, by the way. <laughs> the whole wayward daughter idea is quite, is quite strange in some ways because I literally went into the family business. And the family business is not just traditional music, but it's applying pioneering techniques to traditional music. My parents have always had a very, a very refreshing idea of traditional music and what you can do with it. It's never been prescriptive. And so when, you know, when I wanted to, to, to make albums the way I wanted to make them, they just said, yeah, there was, there was no rebellion. A rebellion would have been, I don't know, becoming an accountant or something. <laughs> quickly, my darling, and quickly I tell thee how the sun, moon and stars are on fire in my belly. La 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 Sometimes when you see someone that you haven't seen for years, it's like, oh, let's get together and play something. And you get together and you play something. Um, and, and you, it just comes out and you think, that is the bottom drawer of a bottom drawer of the bottom drawer 
in the basement of my brain, possibly buried under something with a freezer on top of it. You know? <laughs> Where did that come from? I don't know. I've been playing music now for a very long time. <laughs> um, I'm, I, I've definitely forgotten more than I know. <laughs> The way that I choose music is very much in the hope that people will pick it up and run with it. I very deliberately rarely choose music that other people already play. One of the things about the English tradition is there's a, there's a certain amount of music that was lost, not through the folk process, but through hugely traumatic events like the First World War, for instance, um, which stripped us of a lot of our tradition carriers. Um, I like to go back into the old collections to pull out things that people, that the people, if you like, have maybe forgotten about and that they might love again if I presented it to them. I have met people since I have encountered students who now sing those songs. And I recognize that they're mine because I hear the little changes that I've made, the little, little bits and pieces that I put in there, piece, pieces of myself. And I hear a young person singing that back to me now, a you know, 16, 17 year old will, will sing Made on the Shore or something like that. And I'll, I'll know that it, was, that it was me that I got it from and that they'll be doing that when I'm gone or someone that they've taught that too we'll sing that after I'm gone and that makes me that makes me very happy it makes me feel part of the process of the natural process <laughs>